So one question which comes up for many students is, uh, what if you need to pass in a whole bunch of data to a template? All right. So here we have that you know composition conditional which we were just looking at, and uh, and when we look at that, we execute our template, and we only get to pass in one piece of data. <laughs> How do I pass in all of my data? I've got all these things from all these different places I want to pass in. And uh, the thing is that you want to do is you just need to have a container of some sort into which you could stick all of your data and then you pass that container in. And so that container, which you're going to use, is uh, very often going to be a struct. And so a struct is a data type which can be described as an aggregate data type or a composite data, data type. And uh, it's an aggregate or composite because it aggregates a bunch of stuff together or it's composed, right, of a whole bunch of different pieces. And so you're going to use a struct and you can put all kinds of stuff, unlimited amount of stuff into a struct. And uh, the organization of the struct is going to make your templates uh, uh, read nice. So something else that, you know, people sometimes, you know, students will, will be concerned about will be like, you know, so the dot is just the current piece of data. That's going to be crazy. I'm just going to have a template full of dots. <laughs> and I'm going to have to go back and look through my template and try to figure out, okay, this is that. And it's now the output of this is becoming the input of that. And so it's this thing. How do I keep all that straight? Then again, the answer is structs are great because you access the different pieces of data that you passed in by their field name. And so I have a little example here which sort of illustrates all of that. And uh, we have main.go, and we also have a template. Uh, which one should we take a look at first? <laughs> so uh, let's look at our template. So if we look at our template, this template reads really nicely. You know, the fall term, right? And then we're going to range over all of our fall courses. And uh, if we're ranging over that, what kind of data structure do you think is going to be stored in, in this? Uh, We'll see in a second. Just a question for you to ponder. And then as we range over all of fall courses, we're going to access number and name and units. So then the number of the course, like CSI 40, the name of the course, Introduction to Programming with Go, <laughs> and the units, four units. And then we'll do that with spring. So for the spring term, we're going to range over our spring courses, and we'll print out the number, the name, and the units for the spring. And so... Uh, it's not necessarily intuitive until you've been doing this for a while uh, to see, you know, how do I get my templates to read like that? But that's why I'm making this video. <laughs> and uh, so let's see how do we build our data structure to do that. And so we're going to uh, use a struct. And the struct, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to do a composite literal to put all of our data into the struct. All right. So. Um, here we have a type course struct. So each course will have a number, a name, and units, right? And they're all strings. And then we're going to have a type semester. And each semester will have a term, which will be a string. So I just want to be able to store spring, fall, summer, and just have that available as a string so I can access it. And then it will also have courses. Each semester will have courses. And so that will be a slice of course, <laughs> right? So just a whole bunch of different courses. <laughs> So that's, uh, that's each semester, and then each year we'll have uh, fall, spring, and summer, and these will all be semesters. So years made up of semesters. So I really like that example. And so when we're ready to sort of create you know, a data structure to hold all of uh, the, the courses for the year, how would we go about doing that? So you might want to pause the video right here, and, uh, and additionally, you could go read about composite literals in the language spec. Or you could just Google Go Composite Literal and see some examples. Uh, so if you haven't worked with this yet, uh, or if it's a little bit rusty for you, go check it out. So this would be a nice little challenge. Uh, try to create a year data structure using a composite literal. <laughs> All right, so uh, so that's the, that's the basics. And uh, whether or not you did it or did not do it, if you did do it, good on ya as the Australians say, or so I've heard. Uh, good on you. I kind of like that saying. I don't know where I heard that, but uh, I like it. So now that we have uh, these three data structures, let's uh, use a composite literal to populate them with some data. And, uh, and so down here, um, I think I'll show you this first. 
So here's, uh, here's the basic structure of a composite literal without any data added in. And so I just put this into, into notes for your perusal. <laughs> and, uh, and there's a link to uh, composite literals in the language spec. All right, so here we have year, and uh, we're creating a variable y. So we're just going to pass in one variable. We have the variable y. And it is, uh, it's going to be of type year, and we're using a composite literal. So we immediately have the type. And remember, the type here is year. Right, so we're going to have fall, spring, and summer if we want, and uh, and then we do uh, immediately curly braces, right? And then we're going to have entries. So our first entry is fall, and our second entry is spring. Cool. Well, let's just look at one of those entries because these are both identical. And uh, the first one is fall right there, right? And so we say, all right, what is fall? Fall, because that's what a year is. A year is made up of fall, spring, and summer, and we're not specifying what summer is. And we can do that. We could not specify one of the fields uh, since we are naming the fields and using the fields as keys. All right, so here we have fall and fall colon. Uh, fall is going to be equal to, what's fall equal to? Well, fall is a semester. And so here we have a type semester and another composite literal. And so that composite literal goes from uh, there to there. <laughs> cool. There to there. Right, and so here's some type semester with the braces and a composite literal. Well, what's in a fall? What's in a semester? We have term and we have courses. And so here we have term, colon, and we give it a string and then comma, right? And so then we have our next one, which is courses, colon, and then what is courses? It's a slice of course. What is a course? Well, a course is another struct with three fields, all of which are strings. So now we uh, come here and we have a slice of course, our type, and then we also have right, a composite literal for our slice data structure. And so our slice data structure is going to be made up of different courses. And each course is a composite literal with three strings. So we could have more courses here if we wanted, right? as many as we want. I guess keep going. And you have this ending trailing comma right there. So you want to have that too. And then you just populate those fields with the number of the class, CSI 40, the name of the class, uh, advanced web programming or introduction to programming with Go, and then the units of the course. And you populate all that there. So when we fill all that out, uh, that's what this looks like right here. Dun, 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 dun. So it's all filled out. But you can see just kind of having it there with the data stripped away, uh, I think makes it a little bit easier to read and understand. So we, we create that one big data structure, holding all of our stuff. It has all the fields. We pass them in. And then our template, we could say, you know what? From fall, this field, you then give me term, right? And so, you know, again, if we look back at our data structure, you know, we are asking for from fall, give me term. We're naming the fields in our different structs. And, uh, and fall came from the year struct, and term came from the semester struct. But it's, uh, you know, that sort of dot notation, dot fall, and then inside there, dot term, right? And then once I have term, uh, what's the next one? Uh, here we have term, and then we have courses, right? And then courses. So here we have range, dot fall, dot courses, and we can range over all those. And uh, so as we range over each courses, our data structure here, we're ranging over each course as a slice of course, we're ranging over it, we're getting a course. And, uh, and inside each course, we have a number, a name, and units. And again, the dots referring to the current data structure. What's the current data structure? It's the, it's the struct of typed course, which has three string fields, number, name, units. And so we're able to access that, that struct right there with the, 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 the data populated fields uh, assigned to values, right? Uh, we can access it right there. So that's how you do a little bit more of a complex data structure. And, uh, and that could take a little bit of time to wrap your head around. But that answers the question, like, I have a ton of data to pass in. How do I pass it in? You put it all into a, sorry, you put it all into a struct. And, uh, and then when you also have, um, and that also answers the question of how do you, uh, how do you do like, um, you know, get rid of just the dots? So you're not trying to figure out, oh, what are all the dots? Again, the fields and the struct make that really reasonable and something easy to do. All right, I hope that helps.